Hello and welcome to Voices of Blue Scope, the podcast where we go behind the scenes of Blue Scope to meet the people who create strength every day. I'm your host, Martin Feld. Thank you for listening. Today we're featuring a one on one interview with Megan Bell, HR manager Mills, Coating and Talent at New Zealand Steel. Megan kindly sat down to speak with us in person during our visit to the Glenbrook site in Aotearoa, New Zealand. She shared her career background and motivation to work in human resources and explained a range of programs at New Zealand Steel, intended to lower barriers to workplace participation. All in all, these initiatives have led to a nomination for New Zealand Steel in the HR New Zealand Awards. Let's cross to the interview with Megan now. I don't know what it was about New Zealand Steel, but it was always on my to work at list. And I had been working as a business partner and previous to that, a remuneration consultant or HR consultant. But I knew that I always wanted to work here for whatever reason. And I reached out to uh, Margaret Gracie, who was the GM of people at the time, and said to her, look, I'm really keen to one day work with New Zealand Steel. I love the industry. I love that, you know, the company makes magic, turning iron sand into steel and the challenge around the unionised environment and and complexity of the operations and it just so happened that she had a team member leave about that time so it was kind of meant to be the stars aligned and I joined New Zealand Steel. So I joined as a business partner looking after mills and coding and from there my role has just grown somewhat organically and I'm someone who can't really say no to things, so I've taken on um, a few other portfolios, including the recruitment team or the talent team, um, our L&D team, and then I also kind of spearhead our diversity and inclusion and organisational development portfolios. Wonderful. So you're very busy. Yeah, but I enjoy it. (laughs) That's great. Now, you said that you weren't quite sure what it was about New Mm. Zealand still that drew you in yeah. but surely you've developed that kind of relationship or connection with the company yes, since then or definitely. you've come to understand the place even more yep. so across that breadth of roles and connections that you've worked in and maintained mm. what would you say is the vibe or character or mm. kind of selling point of New Zealand Steel now that you've been entrenched in the place what does it mean to work here yeah it's, it's just one of those Kiwi classic stories, you know, we take on the world, we love an underdog story, we created magic, we defied the odds and did something that no one else could and, you know, possibly said we couldn't. It's something that a lot of Kiwis or New Zealanders identify with and and we love, you know, that type of story and it's part of, you know, being part of that proud legacy is really cool. And we're such a unique environment. It's such a special organisation to be part of. And you can feel that when you're here. And so many new starters join our organisation and say, this is nothing like I've ever done before. And and this is nothing like any other organisation I've been part of. And there's so much enthusiasm around the business. And everyone really feels like they have skin in the game. And and we're all kind of part of it and, and, you know, succeeding or failing together. And that's a really cool thing to be part of. Also, I really love our company values around looking after our community, our environment, our people. You know, that aligns with what I enjoy and and who I am. And and it's good to be part of an organisation that believe in those things as well. Now, you just said the words there aligns with what you enjoy. I'm curious to know more about what you enjoy, specifically about the discipline that you're in or Mm. HR, working with people. Aside from, I suppose, the obvious building relationships or Mm. being an interface, what is important or enjoyable to you about Mm. HR and the work that you do? So I got into HR because I wanted to, this sounds really cheesy, but improve people's lives. Work is such a large part of your life. You spend so much time there, you know, second to family. They are your family. That's people you spend your time with, the environment that you immerse yourself in for the majority of your week and your life. And I got into HR to improve that for people because there's a lot of people who don't enjoy their workplace or don't feel safe or don't feel included or represented. And that's where my passion comes from. And when I leave here going, well, that was a really good day, it's when I've been able to enable those things for other people, solve a problem for them, help them to feel included, overcome a barrier or challenge so that they enjoy their work, so that they can contribute everything that they can. And, and, and realize their own success that's a very clear explanation thank you (laughs) and when it comes to talking about your work at New Zealand Steel and what the company does clearly New Zealand Steel is known 
in the country, known in this mm-hmm. area, so people understand what its role is here. Yep. But what kinds of conversation do you have with family or friends or new acquaintances when they say, what, what do you do or what does New Zealand Steel do? Do people have a good idea about the processes and the people that happen here? I think they do, but only to an extent. And people don't understand our size, particularly of our, our footprint, our site, our physical, our physical presence, or the importance to the economy. A really good example of that was the Auckland Bridge uh, last year when uh, they needed to replace a steel beam. And that really hit home to our politicians we were talking to, saying, look, we can replace that really quickly for you versus if you import it. The importance of a domestic um, steel producer really became clear in examples like that. So when I explain what we do, what I do, or sorry, what New Zealand Steel does to family and friends, like, I don't know everything about the steel making process. I'm, I'm not an expert, but you do absorb things through conversations. But I just don't think people kind of appreciate that. And, and look, it could be because we've, we kind of keep to ourselves we kind of keep quiet sometimes and I know that as an organization we're being bolder and we're communicating more about who we are and and that we're here and building up our market presence which is not only helpful you know for our employees to feel proud and talking about where they work and belong but also in terms of our recruitment activity building our brand and our market presence. In doing all of those different things whether it's recruitment or building the brand or working with people what are some interesting projects or initiatives that Mm. you maybe had the chance to be part of. Yeah. So in terms of our recruitment, we don't really struggle for candidates in many of our roles. There are specialised roles that, like all other organisations around New Zealand, we struggle to fill. But one thing that we've been working on, and look, it's part of our broader blue scope strategy, is around diversity and inclusion. So we've done a lot of work in the last five to ten years to change our market perception from being a male-dominated, heavy industry, you know, big, burly men, dirty work, into a place that is more inclusive and accessible to a broader range of candidates. And a lot of that focus has been on half of the population being gender and and making our organisation appear more female friendly and and actually show the support and mechanisms we have in place to support all sorts of candidates. And a key piece of work we've done in this space recently is we started doing focus groups with some of our working parents because we are a unique operating environment. The nature of our operations is somewhat unique. And we've got challenges that other organisations don't around, you know, shift patterns and the physical kind of separation of our plants and the structure of our organisation and and the way that we work. And so we can't just pull out the same old HR playbook and go to page four and implement that and, and hope that people feel more included. We have to hear it from our people. And so what we did is we pulled together a focus group uh, for working parents was our kind of initial focus, but we're going to broaden that out, uh, take a broader scope around inclusion. And what we found is that little problems can be solved so easily. For example, just from that com- those conversations, we managed to reduce the time it took to access maternity PPE. We hadn't really known it was a problem, but what we found is that people were ordering maternity PPE, and by the time it arrived three months later, they needed the next size up already. And so we made some really small changes that had a really big impact. There's also challenges around breast pumping on site, so when mums return to work and they want to continue pumping, they weren't really able to do that. We had a facility on site, but it was too far away from a lot of our plants. And feedback from our our women on shift is that it wasn't feasible, it wasn't realistic that they could use that service. So what we did is we brought a fridge and now that fridge is a roaming fridge and we can put it in your plant wherever you are. We'll set you up with a private room, lockable door, fridge, seat, and, and it's enabled our woman to continue pumping. And the testimonials we got from our, our employees around that were so powerful. Like hearing that they could continue to breastfeed their babies and gave them that identity as both a mum and an employee and, and the change it brought to their lives was really powerful and it just makes us want to do more of that. I really like how you've said that they could be employees and mums. Yes. Because when you do enter work or any different social sphere, it's understandable that you would adopt maybe a different role or persona, Mm. but you're facilitating people to really be themselves. That's right. And because the world of work isn't structured in a way that supports two 
working parents or you know two working people within a family environment and we've got on top of that unique barriers like the fact that our shift is seven to seven but daycare closes at five or six and so we've identified that there's lots of barriers to participation or, or barriers to accessing these types of roles and so we're looking at ways that we can overcome that or support our people better and all of this work culminated in offering additional parental leave Um, We've got a new leave type called wāwhakanā, which is Māori for time for rest. And it means that in the last six weeks of pregnancy, our woman can go home and rest um, on full pay. Or they can choose to participate as much or as little and and work as they like and, and still receive that full pay, which is really cool. We're not saying, off you go, we don't want you here. We're saying, please come and go as, as you like to. Go and put your feet up if you need to. But if you'd like to participate in training or meetings or stay in touch, um, you can. And to be clear, this Māori uh, program that you've just mentioned, that mm-hmm. benefits everyone. That's just not specific to one all, cultural or... All pregnant, yes, yeah, that's right, all pregnant um, employees. Well, that's yeah, right, so you've essentially imported a different way of thinking. That's right. Yep. That benefits everyone. Yeah, so that's just one of the examples, um, an outcome of that working parents focus group. There were a range of other initiatives, and we've actually put those initiatives forward and been named a finalist in the HR New Zealand Awards for the diversity and inclusion category, which is so exciting. The awards night is on the 9th of March, where we find out whether we're named the winner or, you know what, we're just so proud to even be a finalist. And it's not because we have the most... Uh, generous leave package um, or we're doing the best and brightest things I think it's a true recognition of how far we've come and this is what we communicated to um, the judging panel is that we're not a big bank or you know we, we don't have endless amounts of money and we haven't all started at the same starting point we've had a long history of you know male dominance and industry specific barriers to overcome and we're really proud of where we got to and it's really nice to have that kind of validation and recognition from our HR peers. Well congratulations on that recognition to start with and all the best with the award itself. Thank you. Let's hope you win but if not (laughs) wonderful to be recognised anyway. It is yeah. Now there are other programs at least I've been made aware of happening here in New Zealand still mm. that you're involved with. One that came up is Let's Be Frank. Yes. Now, I don't know a lot about this. I'm yep. guessing listeners probably don't either. Can you tell us about that? Sure. So this is a relatively new initiative. Uh, we kicked it off last year. And essentially, it's a networked environment where Franklin-based employers, and for look out, uh, broader audience who don't know um, the New Zealand region, Franklin is our kind of local area. It's our part of South Auckland that we're part of. And, you know, linking back to our bond where our communities are our homes, what we do is we're connecting local employers with our high school students and we're offering them career development opportunities. So it's built by New Zealand Steel, but other organisations uh, in our area can benefit from it and participate in it. So we started last year with kind of like a trial group. We've had about five students come through the program and they start by doing like a day in the life experience and we match them with people from within a discipline they think they want to uh, you know, go and study after high school. So the point is to keep them in high school and, and really give them a taste or an insight into what their future after school looks like. It might validate for them that they're on the right track or they might pivot and go actually yeah, I really didn't want to do finance or, you know, actually accounting looks, you know, much more different than I expected. So we've had five students come through a day in the life experience and one actually stayed on with us and did a paid internship over summer. And the ethos that we kind of communicate is they're not there to sweep the floors or make the coffees. They are there to be part of the team and to truly understand what it's like to work in that type of career or that type of function. And what motivated or brought about this initiative? What said we need to go mm. to high schools? So it's all about building a talent pipeline. It's also, that's probably about half of it. The other half is really around doing the right thing by our community and giving our students opportunities. Like I was saying, it's not only New Zealand Steel, although we're spearheading it, we're involving other organisations and connecting our students with their community to give them insight into really the opportunities for organisations they might want to work at and return to. One example is one of our five students who have been through that work experience opportunity is a young female who's going to study engineering at Canterbury 
and she's come and had a look at what we do and it's really ignited a passion in her and she's kind of decided absolutely this is what I want to do. We actually have a scholarship uh, down at the University of Canterbury and she's going to apply for it. She wants to come and do an internship here. So that's what we wanted to achieve, right, to spark that passion in somebody and just so happens that she wants to come and work for us, which is awesome. Um, so we, we've built that relationship really early on before we're even competing for grads when they come out of university. We've already got someone who is passionate about New Zealand Steel. It sounds very fulfilling to be able to set up relationships like that and see changes in people. When you think about changes in yourself, mm. Can you think of a particular time, it could be before New Zealand Steel or during your time in New Zealand Steel, that you've dealt with a certain challenge or had a turning point that has been key to your career? What's been something that's shaped you since you joined here? When I joined here, I'd done about four years of consulting work and I'd done a few years of business partnering. So I came in relatively green, but the managers of the day believed in me and I was going in the interview like why are you hiring me <laughs> can I do this this is this is a huge challenge for me I'd never worked with unions and this was a strongly unionized environment I did the classic Kiwi undersell you know they showed belief in me and I've got to remember that belief and and hold on to it because where I've come in the last five years is huge you know starting off just being a business partner to Mills and Coding and, and feeling like I had a lot to grow into that role I've been lucky to be so well supported and given opportunities to stretch and grow and I'm someone who always throws himself in the deep end. I've said before I I never say no to things and I'm I'm really good at (laughs) keeping myself really stretched but I'm just so appreciative of all the opportunities I've had here and I look back, I'm coming up to five years service um, kind of middle end of the year and I look back at the, the growth and development I've had during that time and it's amazing. I feel like every year here has been like two years of experience because of all the opportunities I get, because of the belief in my team, I get to take you know calculated risks and, and try things I haven't done before, particularly around ER and IR, or sorry, employment relations and industrial relations. The learnings in that space has been incredible. Well, this has been a wonderful opportunity to get to know you and learn more about New Zealand Steel and its people. So if you're comfortable in the conversation there, I think we could call it a wrap. Thank you. Thanks so much for joining the episode. No problem, thank you. We hope that you enjoyed our interview with Megan and we thank her for her time. To learn more about the people, places and topics that were mentioned, make sure to visit the links and show notes for this episode in your web browser or podcast app. You can also visit bluescope.com, TV Bluescope on YouTube, or the Bluescope and New Zealand Steel pages on LinkedIn. Thank you for listening to Voices of Bluescope. It's been great to have you with us.